Hey, what's up? I'm Andrew Bacon. So you might be thinking that we bought this record console table at like a high-end furniture store, but you're wrong. We pulled this old cabinet out of our garage, we repurposed it, did a few little tweaks, and boom, made this awesome DIY record console table. And I wanna show you how we did it on this episode of Field Treasure Designs. So I started by taking off the doors, and then here I am taking off the hardware. Then I grabbed the cabinet and I took off the hardware from the cabinet as well. Because of the way cabinets are manufactured and need to be assembled, sometimes they have edges that overhang like you see there. And because I'm going to wrap the entire section to make the cabinet deeper, I'm going to have to fill in with blocking so that I can attach it and make it flush. So here I'm just making sure I have the right thickness of board to be able to put on as blocking. Hopefully this will all makes sense here in a second. So here I'm just cutting some scrap material into the right widths and then the right lengths. So now I'm just doing a test fit to make sure it fits within those measurements. It doesn't have to be perfect. I grab my nail gun and nail it in. I just have one more side to do to fill with blocking. And so this one needs different measurements because I'm going to cut a couple pieces and stack them on top of each other to allow that same depth to be achieved. So that looks good and fits well. Now I just need to fill in that little void with some smaller stacked pieces. And perfect. And now I just nail them in the same way I did earlier. Luckily the bottom of the cabinet here is thicker so the nails don't go through. So now I've got four flush sides and I can wrap the cabinet. So here I'm measuring the length and then I put it on the ground to get the exact depth that I want to use. We decided on 14 inches. I'm using finished quarter inch plywood for my side wraps. I ripped them down to the 14 inches and now I'm cutting them to length. Now I simply attach them around the sides. So I start with the sides and I grabbed a piece of scrap to just butt up against it so I would make sure it was flush with the bottom. And then the bottom and the top are going to overhang just a little bit to make those butt joints. Next, I turn it around and do the other side. Now I'm gonna do the top and the bottom. First I measure just to make absolutely sure of that little extra overhang I need for the top and bottom. Then I just fit them in place and nail them in. I decided to set it on the ground just to give myself a better angle for the rest of the nails for each side. I'm using the length of a pencil to keep me in line so that I make sure a nail into the cabinet underneath. I continued this process until I nailed in every side. Because there's a few inches of overhang, I needed some blocking to be able to connect those rear corners. So I grabbed some scrap and I'm cutting a 45 degree angle on my miter saw. So I have some triangles to fit in there. Just like you see here, they fit in that corner and they give me something to nail to on both sides. I had to be really careful though. I didn't want to nail through and get my finger. Now that corner is nice and secure. I also did it on the other three corners. I didn't film it because it was too windy that day, but I spray painted all the hardware gold. It turned out pretty good. Then the fun part, sanding. I sanded forever. So those butt joints needed to be sanded, the corners needed to be sanded, and then obviously the face and the inside. And it took a long time, but I have to say it was worth it. I needed to rough it down and then stage it up with nicer grit and make it nice and smooth so that that primer and then paint would stick really well. Since we're keeping records inside the cabinet, I needed to make sure it was deep enough to hold those records. So I grabbed my multi-tool and I cut out that back frame so that the records could extend out beyond a little bit and fit in the cabinet. This is also a good time to note that we decided to just keep the back of the cabinet open because we really didn't see a need to close it in. I finished sanding the cabinet and then I had to do the doors. Ugh, the sanding will never end. After I was done sanding, my awesome wife primed the cabinet, then painted it this awesome emerald color. We obviously decided not to do the bottom, just for time. I found these awesome gold hairpin legs from Amazon that fit perfectly. I got really lucky with the length of the screws that they did not go through the bottom, which was awesome. 
Since there's not much material on the back side, I only did two screws on the sides instead of three. And you get the idea. Pilot holes and then drill the screws. Okay, now that we're done with the legs, it was time to flip it over. I was worried if it would wobble and no, it's solid. I love it. So we brought everything into the house and I took the doors and just had to put on the new hardware. Talk about a satisfying part of the process. I bought these cool handles on Amazon as well. I'll share those links below. This old cabinet has a magnet closure and I decided to keep it and use it as well. So here I'm installing that. Next, I grabbed the clips to install for the shelf that goes in, and then I wanted to see if those records fit, and yeah, they look good. But then I had an idea that I'll show you here in a second. I grabbed the shelf, and I installed that just to make sure that was all good. And then, yeah, let me show you this cool idea I came up with so those records will fall if they don't have something to stop them. So I cut some scrap wood down to act as little stop blocks so that I could have little sections of records without having to go through the entire pile every time. So they're kind of like little small bookends which hold the records in place. Boom, there you go. It keeps them from sliding, I guess I should say. Now I have to install those doors. Oh, this is such a fun part. Thankfully, my wife was there to hold it in place. Otherwise, it would have been a little tricky. Okay, one down. And there it is, the DIY record console table made out of an old upper cabinet that we pulled out of our garage. I still can't believe we almost threw this thing away. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to check out my links below in the show notes. Hit that like button and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next video. Thanks.